Hello, so a while ago I made a video as a supplement to a course that I was teaching in fluid mechanics um, on the simplified principles of lift generation by airfoils and it turned out that making it simple, th that simplified explanation is uh, a bit elusive. Um, there are several things at play and if uh, I try to uh, condense the explanation to just one or two of them it doesn't really paint the entire picture and can be misleading so this is my attempt to revise it um, here we go this is the original video and i will cut into it and offer some modifications or uh, suggestions of how to interpret uh, what we're seeing there so I wanted to talk about the basic airfoil theory and this is a simplified version uh, of the basic principles behind lift generation by foils. Uh, foils are streamlined objects, they can be airfoils in air or hydrofoils in water, but basically these are uh, slender streamlined objects that can be positioned at a certain angle of attack with respect to the incoming flow so that they deflect the flow in a way that generates the uh, lifting force and the principle behind that is uh, can be explained by conservation of mass and the Bernoulli's equation tells us that uh, pressure plus one half velocity squared is a constant along the streamline so if the velocity increases therefore along that streamline there would be lower pressure and if we integrate that pressure over the foil, we will have a net force acting in the uh, positive vertical direction. So that's lift generation. And so this is the part that's potentially the most confusing. The uh, flow on the top surface of the airfoil indeed accelerates. Uh, but the reason for acceleration is not the longer path that the particles of fluid have to take around the foil. In fact, that, that is not necessarily true. Um, but the conservation of mass uh, dictates that the flow over the top portion of the airfoil is constrained into a narrow region. And that in itself is a little bit difficult to visualize. If there would be a solid wall bounding the flow on top, then it would perhaps be a little bit easier because the flow would be forced into uh, a narrow region as it flows over the top surface. Well, in reality, uh, the flow is unbounded. Yet still, if we consider the control volume that is a stream tube, then the, the flow is indeed uh, forced so to speak, into a narrower uh, cross-sectional region and it has to accelerate. And now there is another mechanism at play. Uh, considering just the Bernoulli principle and the reduced pressure uh, on top of the foil relative to the, the bottom part of the foil is not quite enough to explain the entire mechanism of lift generation. There is also um, the mechanism of diverting the flow downward downstream of the foil you can see that the streamlines over the top portion are diverted downwards the flow sticks to the curved uh, section of the foil um, this uh, there is an effect called coanda effect when the uh, the fluid flow sticks to the curved Portion. It has to do with entrainment of the slowly moving fluid particles by the faster moving particles and deflection of the fluid towards the curved surface. There is a, an example of that where if you have a jet of water coming out of a tap, for example, and you uh, bring a curved spoon next to it, the jet of water will stick to the spoon and follow its curvature. Um, it's... Um, this type of effect is also present on the top surface and then the flow that comes into contact with the lower surface of the foil on the bottom is diverted also downward so that uh, the fluid is uh, is going down generally speaking and that results in 
the reacting force on the foil going up. That same thing, this same effect can be also explained in terms of the circulation. The foil at an angle of attack distorts the streamlines and introduces this curvature to the flow pattern. This is equivalent to uh, introducing a circulation to the overall flow field containing the foil and the reacting force because we added the circulation to the flow which before placing the foil there did not have any uh, the effect of adding the circulation results in a reacting force that generates lift and that magnitude of the lift is proportionate first of all to the incoming flow this is the air speed and to the angle of attack so as we increase the angle of attack that curvature of the streamlines is increased so that is very good but it works only up to a certain um, angle of attack which is called the stall angle at some point the flow along the surface is going to separate so the boundary layer that exists along the surface of the foil is going to separate from the surface so there will be a flow in the opposite direction close to the surface so these vortices will form and the portion of the foil that's in that rotational wake will stop producing lift to stop contributing to the lift generation so the values of the lift will drop substantially as that uh, stall condition is reached now uh, and in many applications it's beneficial to delay the stall as the angle of attack is increased for example if an aircraft uh, is coming for landing uh, the uh, air speed needs to be reduced from the cruising speed to some more reasonable lower value but in order to maintain the lift so that the aircraft doesn't drop the angle of attack is increased and if it needs to be increased past the nominally stall um, value then we need to change the geometry of the foil somehow we need to energize that flow along the top surface of the foil to maintain attachment and this can be done by deploying flaps for example what that does it creates a passage from the high pressure high momentum fluid from the bottom surface of the foil to the top surface and that pulls the uh, separation point uh, downstream eventually so um, it, it helps uh, the foil to maintain uh, lift longer uh, so that general pattern of the curved streamlines can be achieved not only by airfoils but for example by rotating bluff bodies like cylinders or spheres um, the uh, rotating cylindrical object in the flow will have a net lift force generated and this is known as Magnus effect and its applications are uh, in ballistics for example uh, sports ballistics the golf balls or soccer balls curving as they uh, travel through the air um, and things like that uh, generally this low pattern the curved streamlines on the top surface uh, and relatively flat on the bottom this is what's necessary to generate lift and the key geometrical feature of uh, lift generating surfaces is the rounded leading edge for example so that allows the fluid particles to wrap around the leading edge and follow the surface um, if the uh, leading edge is sharp there will be separation at that point. The flow can reattach under certain conditions later, but uh, generally, for example, bows of uh, ships, the boats, they have a sharp, uh, uh, sharp geometry, sharp bow, and this allows the boat to travel straight without the uh, net side force acting on the hull. Uh, so that's uh, that's a very uh, brief overview of the physical principles behind uh, lift generating surfaces. So things can become quite complicated. So this uh, circulation uh, that curves the streamline pattern, the Bernoulli effect that's related to the conservation of mass and acceleration of the flow on top, 
and the deflection of the flow downstream of the foil downward which results in the reacting upward force all these effects together contribute to generation of lift so if we're trying to oversimplify the explanation and consider say only the Bernoulli's effect or only the deflection of the flow pattern downward that doesn't quite capture the entirety of the the flow the fluid particles move in relation to each other the motion is affected by motion of the neighboring fluid particles through viscosity uh, those effects uh, really are not captured in the kind of simplistic mechanistic models when the fluid particles are represented as say balls that hit each other or hit the surface of the foil and bounce back uh, the motion of the independent particles is quite different from the motion of fluid particles that are uh, connected to each other through viscosity as well uh, so oversimplifying the explanation um, really doesn't work uh, in my opinion I was uh, kind of aiming at creating the uh, really simplistic reference for the students to just see what oh, this is how the uh, airplanes fly and this is how the lift is generated but uh, very quickly I find that we come to the limit where further simplification uh, really breaks down it's uh, it's not quite the right picture that's represented or I should say it's only a partially right picture that's painted in either one of this um, by either one of these models so really there is no shortcut we need to consider the entirety of the uh, fluid structure interaction um, in order to to be able to explain and eventually calculate the lifting force acting on the airfoil.